Hey guys, this is Ron. So I just wanted to talk real quick about uh, a small little feature, uh, but powerful feature built into iOS that I find that you know guys new to networking often forget about uh, when they're doing their troubleshooting. So let's say I have some users hanging off of Router 3, um, and for whatever reason they're complaining that they're having issues getting to something hanging off of Router 1. So I'll just use the loopbacks as an example in here, but but let's pretend that, that we're having some kind of issue getting between these two routers. So I respond to a ticket, get it, hey, uh, for whatever reason, so-and-so can't get to uh, something on this router. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I've got some kind of issue in the network. Um, you know, let's, let's go ahead and uh, check it out. So I jump on router three, and I just check some bare bones connectivity. Can, oops, can router three hit this network on router one? And of course I get it back. So that to me tells me, okay, so, you know, obviously there's connectivity between the two. Um, and I've validated that, you know, the router can get there. But have I really validated that uh, a user sitting on maybe a VLAN hanging off of router uh, three can get there? No, I haven't. I've just validated that the default interface uh, off of router three can get to router one, but I haven't really shown at all that you know my users can get there. So one thing you can do um, is do an extended ping. So if you just type in ping, I can select the IP protocol and I can select my target address. So I'm going to ping 1.1.1 again. Um, I can uh, if I'm, let's say, having periodic issues, maybe I would do quite a few pings, right? So I want it to do it a, a ton of times uh, to see if maybe, hey, over a course of time, I'm, I'm having some issues. But that doesn't seem to be what's going on. The, the user says he, he just can't get there, right? So we'll leave it at, at the default. That's fine. Datagram size for now, we'll leave at default. Timeout. So... Uh, two seconds is the default, so it's going to wait two seconds to, to get some type of reply. So we'll, we'll stick with that. And now it asks for extended commands. So I'm going to select yes for extended commands. And what this allows me to do is specify my source uh, interface. So if that VLAN exists as some kind of maybe sub interface on this router, I could use that IP as my source. In my case, I'm just going to again use my loopback uh, for testing. Go ahead and just continue hitting enter all the way to the end. And what I find is that for whatever reason, I can ping 1.1.1 when I just kind of use the default interface. But if I ping 1.1.1 sourced from 3.3.3.3, I can't hit it. So that to me sounds like, okay, I've got a routing table issue that for whatever reason, this interface is not, uh, is not showing up somewhere along the path. So if I go to router one, I can do a show IP route. And what I'll find is in fact, uh, this router doesn't know about the three network. Okay. So that helped me troubleshoot that. Okay. So maybe I can get to him but he doesn't know how to return traffic to me. I think I can do a, let's see, debug IP. Let's see, I think there's an ICMP on here. Yep, so quit ICMP. We'll hit enter. So we'll try that again. This time I'm gonna cancel out. Let me see if it'll let me cancel. Yep, it'll let me cancel. Instead of going through the whole thing, I can do a ping dot or 1.1.1.1 and this time just do a source 3.3.3 so I don't have to go through the prompting but the prompting is nice if, if you forget what some of these uh, extra commands are so again I'm pinging 1.1.1 sourcing from 3.3.3 and over here the the packets are getting here um, and it's sending a source reply to destination 3.3.3.3 but if I do a show IP route network is not in table 
So even though it's building the return packet, once it, it, it goes to route it, it doesn't know where that is, and so it drops the packet. So again, the extended ping helped me diagnose that situation, right? So I could get there just by doing a ping. Oop, if I could type like that. And if I look over here, that's my outside interface uh, on router three. But again, if I source it from another one of my interfaces, it gets the packet, but it doesn't know where to send the reply to, right? Because it's not in the routing table. All right, so extended pings uh, come in handy for testing those sorts of things. Another thing you can test with uh, extended pings is uh, MTU issues. So MTU kind of specifies, hey, when I build a frame, uh, whether it's an IP packet going into that frame, TCP uh, going into that IP packet, so on and so forth, the MTU specifies the maximum transmission unit. So uh, once it gets down to the frame layer, that's the biggest frame that I can generate and put on the wire. Well sometimes you find that um, maybe you're doing some kind of tunneling, maybe you're going through some type of device that's that's um, you know modifying the MTU size, whatever it is, you'll find that, hey, so periodically um, when I'm using a certain application or or you know anything like that and I try to go to you know some other device, it's really slow. Um, I seem to be having some issues, um, and and you can go throughout the network and kind of troubleshoot and find that hey, we've got some fragmentation going on, uh, but we're not really sure, you know, uh, at what point it starts to fragment. So, with the ping command, we can uh, choose a lot of different things. So if I did the ping at one dot one dot one again. I can specify a size, right? And I can specify maybe I want it to be 1500 bytes. And I can also put the DF bit on. This is the do not fragment bit. And if I hit here, I get a bunch of M's. So somewhere along the path, I had an issue uh, and 1500 bytes uh, wasn't allowed through the wire, right? Well, I could go one by one by one and, and you know start to figure out okay you know this is the point at which it fragments but there's an easier way to do that so if, again if I go to my extended ping here I'm gonna select extended commands this time we'll set it to uh, an interface that I know works I'm going to set my do not fragment bit. I want a verbose output. And now I want to specify a sweep range. I'm going to start my sweep range at 1400. And I want it to go up to 1500. Because I know that the 1500 wouldn't go through my sweep interval is going to be one. So what this is going to do is it's going to start out at 1400 and try to get it through. Then it's going to go to 1401, 1402, so on and so forth. And what we should see is at some point it stops working. Alright, so let me cancel this. And I'll slide back up. Notice here it's incrementing these up and at 1420 I got through at 1421 I did not get through and so this might help me um, figure out you know hey I, I've definitely got some fragmentation going on at this point maybe I have some kind of tunnel built uh, and, and there's a lower MTU size due to, due to uh, the overhead of, of, of tagging those packets and or, or what have it so there's a lot of things that can feed into it so now I kind of know where to start looking as far as uh, you know what MTU sizes I need to be looking at. And so maybe I'll set the MTU size on a tunnel to, to make that adjustment. Maybe I'll 
Um, just set the MSS, uh, which I think is the maximum segment size uh, for a TCP packet on an interface. So I have a couple of different options for fixing that. But the extended ping here, which you know I wanted to address here, is what helps me kind of quickly find that. So one, it helped me find out that, hey, I've got a routing table issue that this router on the distant end does not is not aware of a network that maybe my users are hanging on. And now I also know that, hey, uh, between uh, my router and, and the destination, I also have an MTU issue um, that I need to start looking into um, and figuring out, okay, where in the network am I having this MTU problem and then start fixing it from there. So again, I hope that you'll keep the extended ping in, in your kind of tool bag. Like I said, a lot of a lot of newer networkers that I you know run into, you know, say, hey, I know I've got connectivity, but my users out here don't have connectivity, and they forget, you know, hey, with the extended ping, I can say, hey, uh, coming from this network to that network specifically, is there connectivity? And I might find that there's not. So again, keep it in your tool bag, and uh, thanks for watching.